Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I'm Sister Miriam. And I'm Sister Naomi. And welcome to Sabbath School Online. We are so glad that you could join us this lovely Sabbath morning. So let us welcome you. Welcome to Sabbath school, children, children. Welcome to Sabbath school, children. Welcome to Sabbath school, teachers, teachers. Welcome to Sabbath school, teachers. Welcome to Sabbath school, Jesus, Jesus. Welcome to Sabbath school, Jesus. Welcome to Sabbath school, everyone, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath school, everyone. In the same way that we've welcomed you this Sabbath, we have to welcome Jesus. And we do that with a prayer. So as we pray, let us welcome the Holy Spirit to meet us wherever we are and to teach us today. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed day that you have been with us. We thank you for this week that you have protected us, you have guided us, you have kept us in good health, you have kept us in safety. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us and our family. Father God, as we go into a new week, we ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to be our guide, continue to strengthen us, to continue to lead us into wisdom and to truth. Father God, we ask that you will continue to bless our bodies, our minds, and our hearts. We ask that we may be a blessing to others. We ask that everywhere we go, whatever we may do, we will remember to keep the, the word in us. We will remember to guide, be guided by you and only you. So we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. We ask that we may bless each other, but we, we may be blessed. So in Jesus' mighty name, we humbly do pray. Amen. Amen. There are so many great things that God has done this week, and we should praise God for them. What's one great thing that God has done for you this week? For some of you, that one great thing that God has done may have been blessing you with another year of life. If it was your birthday this past week, we want to wish you a happy, happy birthday. May God continue to richly bless you as you grow in his grace and favor. Before we start, this would be a great time to pause the video and begin writing out this week's lesson and memory verse. Ready? Ready? Let's begin. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Frenita. Today's story is called The Parable of the Great Beast. The memory verse is from Luke chapter 14, verse 15. It says, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Today's message is Jesus invites us to be with him in heaven. Jesus told a story once about someone who had prepared a great feast. When the feast was ready, he sent to call the guest. Find out what happened and what it could mean for us. Once, Jesus and his disciples were having a meal at someone's house, and Jesus told this story. A man gave a big banquet and invited many people, Jesus began. When it was time to eat, the man sent his servant to tell the guests, Come, everything is ready. But all the guests said that they could not come. Each man made an excuse. The first one said, I have just bought a land, and I must go look at it. Please excuse me. Another man said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen. I must go try them. Please excuse me. A third man said, I just got married. I can't come. So the servant returned. He told his master what had happened. Then the master became angry and said, Go at once into the streets and the alleys of the town. 
bring in the poor, the cripple, the blind, and the lame. Later the servant said to him, Master, I did what you told me to do, but we still have places for more people. The master said to the servant, Go out into the roads and country lanes. Tell the people there to come. I want my house to be full. None of those men that I invited first will ever eat with me. Jesus was talking about himself in this parable. He is like the man who planned the party and invited many people. Jesus has invited everyone to accept his salvation, which leads to eternal life. And he's giving you an invitation. Many people in the story had excuses for not coming to the party. They let other things become more important than being with their friend. They weren't really true friends at all. Because they were too busy with things, they turned down the invitation and missed the great feast. In this parable, the invitation to the banquet is Jesus' invitation for us to accept his salvation. Accepting salvation means that we ask Jesus to forgive our sins and choose to do the things he wants us to do. We have a choice. We can decide to accept his invitation or to let other things become more important in our lives. How about you? Right now, will you say yes to the invitation Jesus has given you? Do you want to be with him in heaven and experience the joy of being in his presence forever? Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for Gracelink.net. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. Audio is post-produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. Welcome back, boys and girls. I hope that you enjoyed today's story, The Parable of the Great Feast. Our story can be found in Luke 14, verses 15 through 24. Luke 14, verses 15 through 24. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who he had invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yokes of oxen, and I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Today's memory verse can be found in Luke 14, verse 15. Luke 14, verse 15. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. One Sabbath, Jesus was eating at a Pharisee's house, and they were watching Jesus carefully to see if he would break the law of the Sabbath. He asked several questions to the Pharisees and the other guests, but they didn't answer. So Jesus said, When you throw a party, don't invite family and friends, but invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame, and you shall be blessed. 
But someone at the table disagreed and said, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast of the kingdom of God. And thus Jesus spoke a parable about a man who prepared a great feast and invited many guests. And when the party was ready, he sent his servant to get the guests. But they created many excuses, such as, I must tend to my new field, and I must tend to my new oxen, or I just got married. So the servant reported to his master all that the invited guest had said, and he was angered. So he sent the servant out to the streets in the dark alleys of the town to bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame to his table. But there was still space at the table for more people. So the master of the house told his servant to go out into the country and bring the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame there until the house was full. And those who were poor, blind, crippled, and lame ate at the banquet table, but none of those who were invited to the banquet ate. Just as Jesus said to the guest at the Pharisee's table, although the poor, crippled, lame, and blind cannot repay you, you will be blessed. How? You will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Parents, please take the time to help answer the following questions with your children. Question one. In the parable, several people were invited to the feast. Did everyone come? Why didn't they come to the feast? Question two, what did the master do when the invited guest didn't come? Question three, what did the master do when there was still space? Question four, what is the difference between the invited guest and the poor, crippled, lame, and blind guest? And question five, how does that relate to Jesus's offer of salvation? This Thursday, we celebrated with friends and family all the great things that God has done. And for many, that meant having a great feast at home. Just like at our Thanksgiving meal, God will have a grand feast in heaven for all those who accept his invitation of salvation. In the story, the banquet represents the free gift of salvation made available to everyone. The invitation to the banquet is for all people on earth, but many make excuses. People don't accept God's gift because money, responsibilities, and relationships often stand in the way. Jesus wants us to know that while the invitation is for everyone, we have to accept the invitation to be with him at the banquet. Today, we will pray to accept God's heavenly invitation of salvation. If you want to say this prayer with me, bow your heads and close your eyes to pray with us. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for just being with us and keeping us and watching over us as we've gone through this week. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you've continued to give us and dine upon us each and every single day. Lord, as we've gathered together as family and friends, be it Physically or virtually, Lord, we just thank you for the things that you have blessed us with continually. Even through the ups and downs, Lord, you have continued to provide us, continue to shelter us, and most of all, continue to give us a gift of your love, mercy, and grace that continues to be renewed and refreshed every morning and night. 
Lord, we thank you for your invitation of salvation and your gift of love that came through Christ Jesus. Lord, we ask that you wipe away our sins, that you clean our heart and you make a new heart inside of us, that we may follow you and live for you each and every single day. We ask that your Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, that you continue to lead us in your word and to help us to grow and become stronger prayer warriors, Lord, that we get to know you and connect with you, that we may grow just like the mustard seed into a large tree that provides and supports your kingdom, Lord. We praise your name always for all the things that you've done, the things that you're doing right now, and the things that you continue to do, Lord. So Lord, we thank you again for your mercy, your grace, and most of all, your love. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us in Sabbath School Online. Just like Bob and Larry always say, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Shalom.